Well, hello and welcome back to the channel and thank you also to all our new subscribers. It's very much appreciated. Well, in today's episode, we're going to continue working on our Tuhatsu 3.5 outboard engine and with a bit of luck, we're going to get it running. So in the last episode, as we know, we had a look around this outboard motor. Everything seems to be there which is good, there doesn't appear to be anything missing, but the overall condition is not too bad. We do need to go through it and have a look, do need to check it all over before we get it out on the water. And as we know, the biggest issue that we found first of all was the gear selector was seized. It's still seized. I tried during the week to loosen it up and it, well, you can see the handle came off. So I'm gonna have to drill out the remainder without damaging the lever arm, which is in there. So that's going to be the next job. However, I have ordered in a new handle and here it is. So uh, we'll get on today and drill that out and have a look. The other big issue, as we know, was I took the head off just to have a look, mainly to access the uh, components in here. And as it turned out, we've got this massive level of corrosion or build up of salt water or something but anyway the water channels are clogged and uh, can't risk that um the impeller is the next thing to have a look at as well anyway just to make sure that the impeller is okay it'll give us a bit of indication as to when the engine was probably last serviced the impeller should be checked every year and replaced every two to three years or every 300 hours uh, I think just to be on the safe side, I'm going to have a look in here, check it out, and probably just replace it anyway. They're not very expensive, not very hard to do, so that's probably what I'm going to do. And then going back to this, again, gaskets obviously wrecked, they normally are, but ordered another one, which has arrived, so you can clean all that up, put the new gasket in, put this back together. The other thing I did was this was rusted up, this little guard which fits on here and I've given that a, a bit of a clean and a bit of a pain it, it doesn't matter that much I just like don't want any bits dropping down in there I just wanted it to look a bit nicer so that's done so I think what we'll do now is we'll just get on with cleaning up these water channels um, and basically get the gasket on there and get that back together So I've given these a good clean up now. I've got all the old gasket, little bits of gasket off and removed those. I was going to use this and I just started using it. And then the problem really is that this metal here is actually fairly soft and it's been painted as well. So I didn't want to go mad with a razor and start scratching and damaging the surface because that would be no good when I put the new gasket on. So in the end, I use some card cleaner just to get most of the dirt and the crud out of there. And then very gently using some sandpaper and work my way down to a very, very soft, fine grit. And it may look a bit sort of dappled, but in general, this whole surface is super clean and really, really smooth. Now, one thing I did notice whilst cleaning it up is if we have a look around the carburetor and all the connections and the screws and everything, there's not a lot of grease, but um, there's grease on there. And that's actually quite a good sign because I'm no expert, but I do understand that when these things are serviced, a lot of these areas need to be greased up. Not too much. I understand if you put loads and pat loads of grease on there, the problem then is it will pick up sand and grit and actually can do a lot of damage. But there's a reasonable amount on there that uh, is enough to worry about. But that's really good because that, that says to me that this must have been serviced probably actually not not that long ago so i'm pleased to find that so before i install the new gasket and put the two bits back together 
I want to drill out the old gear lever and install the new one. So that's what I'm going to get on and do now. Oh my days, that was hard work, that fork tooth and nail, it was not going to give up. Oh, as you saw, I chipped away at it, I used drills, I used screwdrivers, just anything basically to gouge it out, but I got there in the end, I ripped it out, really hoping I haven't done any damage to the, uh, the inside there, I don't want to damage that, scratch it up. Anyhow, I think I might have gotten away with it, and as you can see, the old handle, all the little bits come out, uh, smashed off a pulp. It's the only way I could get it out, and it was totally seized in there. And it would say I actually got washers, so uh, that didn't come with the new kit. So that's no problem. I got some spare one of those. The gear selector arm here, I really had to try and save that, and I think I've gotten away with that as well. I think, fortunately, I haven't damaged that. I've just got not the uh, the pin out the centre there, and uh, it should be good to go. So what I'm going to do is give it a good clean up put the gaskets in, put the new arm in, uh, connect it all together, and hopefully, fingers crossed, we uh, can get our gear and our neutral back. Ladies and gentlemen, I have done it. Can you believe it? I have actually done it. A week ago, this was completely seized. I used a wire brush, as you saw, just to clean out the rest of the tube and get the rest of the corrosion out. It's a lovely, nice, clean surface in there now. So anyway, handle popped in nice and easy, new gasket on there, threaded on a new screw there. Remember to put the pin and the push rod in there do that before you put the handle and it's a lot easier to access that's all sorted and now absolutely fantastic that moves so smooth i mean i can get get it into gear and get it into neutral and and it's quite solid as well it's not flopping around it's not weak it's there and remember also put the little ball in there there's a little tiny ball bearing and a spring and that slots into there so it can lock it into drive and lock it into neutral. I am absolutely chumped. I'm really pumped about that. And trust me, if I can do it, anyone can do it. It really is actually quite that easy. It's just putting in the time. Right, so I'm gonna get the cover and the gasket on there. I'm gonna get the top put back on there, and then we'll move on to the next stage. nice and easy. I've got the sick bolts in there, and the gaskets in there. Now remember when tightening up to do them diagonal across and don't use power tools. I didn't use a power tool. Just do it all by hand. Use power tools. You can risk stripping the thread or just, just generally damage and it doesn't need that. It's just all by hand. So that's all done and I'm happy with that. The uh, lever's still working. 
um, and uh, that's absolutely brilliant. So the next thing I'm going to move on to is down here, we're going to get into this area and have a look at the impeller and see what condition that's in. Okay, so I've gotten so far, uh, remembered to disconnect the water pipe at the top, so I had to take the head off again, no problem, only six bolts. Disconnect the water pipe, which comes up from the impeller, uh, taken the bolts out, slackened off the gear selector at the top there, and uh, basically just trying to tease this off. It, 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 it's resisting, but it is moving. Now, looking at the debris and corrosion in there, I don't actually think this section's been taken off for quite some time. There's seaweed, there's stones, there's all sorts running in there. So what I'm going to do is carry on tapping away on here and hopefully we should be able to separate it and uh, have a look and see what state the impeller's in. Now this has been an absolute pig to get out and I know for a fact that uh, what should happen is you undo the bolts, give it a little tap, and then the rod and the uh, gear selector and rod as well, the, the drive shaft, everything basically should just slide out. But as I say, this has not been touched for a very long time. Look at the amount of mess on the floor there, all the bits that have been coming out. Anyway, the only way I managed to do it is to basically put an extension bar here onto the top spline of the drive shaft at the top here. And basically, I've just been hammering away and slowly it's coming out. Now when I have a look, I thought, well, maybe I've missed out on something, but I haven't. When I look at the state of this bar, how this shaft is smooth here, where there's a bracket up here where it sits in, it's quite smooth, but everywhere else it's just corroded. And I think what's happened now, obviously, is the shaft further up is corroded and it's getting jammed as I'm pushing it through the slot there. So anyway, I'm going to carry on bashing away at it, and uh, I think we're nearly there, and then we'll pop it out and have a look. Well, I've finally done it. That took a lot of work, and uh, WD-40, but I've finally done it. And as you can see, this is the water pipe. It's quite, quite corroded. Uh, might take a bit of clean up, or might just get another one. <clears throat> but the dry shaft itself is... Uh, pretty warm but again I think I could probably just clean that up as so long as it's intact um, so let's have a look at the impeller which is tucked away in here um, I don't think it's going to be in very good condition but uh, let's take a look Here we go. Right, let's slide that up. Be careful not to lose some of these little rubber bushings. And the impeller's tucked in under there. So let's. Okay, so let's take a bit of a closer look here. You can see the uh, the fins on the impeller there. They're all present and correct there. They're not cracked, they haven't peeled, there's no little shards in there, so that's really good. And uh, they're all touching the side as well, the casing, so they haven't perished, they haven't fallen away. So overall, that's not actually in bad condition. It's obviously probably, I think it's probably a couple of years old, but um, yeah, 
it would have been okay. Wouldn't uh, wouldn't have caused a problem. And now they're so cheap and so easy to do once you've got the uh, the they've got the thing apart. Um, so I will replace that with a new one and a new gasket, and then we'll be good to go. Well, it's finally back together now. I've got the uh, impeller put back together, new ones in there, and I put the shaft back together. Took about two hours, was an absolute pig. The worst of it was getting this back on again, getting those rods connected. That kept falling out, absolute nightmare. But also keeping it in gear as well. A um, bit of a funny thing going on down there. If you don't keep this shaft properly in the right place, you can't get the gear and you can't get neutral again. And we end up back to square one. However, I finally, after two hours of fighting, it's all back and it's all working as it should. Okay, so that's it for this episode. Uh, thank you for joining me. If you enjoyed, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Join me on the next video when we will have a look at the carburetor and uh, I think we'll probably get it started. Thank you. See you on the next one.